This is it. This is the Bash Bunny Mark II. It's arrived a pandemic and a chip shortage later. I have them in my hands and you can too. If you're not familiar with this, this is a USB attack and automation platform. It runs payloads that do hot plug attacks, mimicking multiple USB devices that are all trusted. And by doing so, it can compel or trick computers into divulging private information that they probably shouldn't. So it can show up as a keyboard and inject keystrokes while simultaneously showing up as a USB ethernet adapter and you know, be, uh, emulating a network or uh, you know, USB storage or serial and so many more amazing possibilities when you put those all in combination so that you can do some really fun stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and link to a playlist on the Bash Bunny uh, because this is the Mark II. This is the new and improved version. So there's already a ton of payloads and we've talked about this a lot on uh, the show before. Um, and it's backwards compatible with all of those, but it also brings a lot of really cool new stuff. So I'm just, here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you some stories here about how this came to be and so some of the reasoning behind some of these features. But I'm gonna go ahead and just jump to the uh, chase right here about the new actual hardware. Uh, it's faster, it's double the RAM, and that really helps with some of the heavier lifting stuff. Your, your frameworks like Metasploit and your big heavy apps that you use like Python, that's where you're gonna see a huge improvement on that front. Uh, we added micro SD card slot, which is fantastic because it's micro SD XC, ultra high capacity. And what that means is in addition to, you know, you got eight gigabytes on board of the, a desktop class SSD, which is awesome. It's what allows it to boot in seven seconds. But if you want to just exfiltrate oodles and oodles of loot, and I keep saying exfiltrate, but I mean like an involuntary backup, you can use this to back up uh, literally an entire disc. I've seen micro SD cards, uh, half a terabyte and the spec goes to two terabytes. So there you go. Uh, Bluetooth. And this is fantastic because what it means adding wireless to this is a game changer because it means geofencing, right? That means limiting the scope of engagement and making sure that only the target that you're actually interested in is going to get attacked. And if it leaves that proximity of that area, then it will basically be inert or vice versa. You can just make sure that, you know, if you profile your target, you can say, hey, I know these devices are in the vicinity and ensure that payloads only execute when they're in their intended destination. And that is so critical in red teaming. It uh, also means that we can do remote triggers. And remote triggers are really exciting on the social engineering front because you know, previously the Bash Bunny was a, a little bit, I don't want to say dumb, it, it just didn't have kind of any visibility outside of its target. And now having the ability to communicate with it over, you know, your phone or, or literally any other Bluetooth device, like a, a, a remote, I mean, I've got a, a wireless mic here, right, that I can use to trigger payloads. It means that there are so many more possibilities in social engineering where my, I, you know, get my target to turn their back. I ask them to print something for me, whatever have you. Um, I now can control the payload in multiple stages. So I can say, hey, stage one, do these things. And then when you see this Bluetooth device come on, like I turn Bluetooth on on my phone, boom, stage two, stage three, et cetera, et cetera. It also means that you can do proximity-based attacks. So, I mean, I can actually imagine using this here in the van where when I rock up to the van, it senses my phone and I can have some automation stuff happen and it can inject keystrokes into, you know, so the different computers and stuff that I have up here and it can communicate on the network with various different devices. So that's, that's kind of cool. There's a lot of possibilities on that front. And I do have a small number of them here in the van as I'm, you know, hacking across America. Uh, so hackacrossamerica.com, sign up we'll, now that things are starting to open a little bit more and people are getting vaccinated more and we can, I don't know, I would love to sit around a campfire and tell you some of the stories that I can't tell you right here, but uh, I will tell you a few of those stories. Oh, there's one other place where you can uh, get these in person and that is Jason Street is teaching a class at Black Hat using these. Uh, so there you go. And if we have some inventory, we may have a presence at DEF CON. Things are still in the air, but you get the idea. Uh, okay, so there you go. Runoff, hack5.org, pause the video, grab a bash bunny. Uh, thank you for your support. 
if they're not there, literally just sign up to be notified when they're back in stock. And I'm so sorry that I don't have anything more than that, but this chip shortage is real. And I will say with confidence that we've automated the whole platform such that as soon as that, you know, as soon as they enter the warehouse and they get scanned, it kicks off scripts. It kicks off, there's con jobs and there's scripts that will literally email you the moment that they're in the warehouse. So there you go. Uh, oh, but going back to Jason Street, I do want to tell you a couple of stories about the development of the Bash Bunny and now the Bash Bunny Mark II, as I, as I show it to you in this super sleek, awesome uh, Hack 5 skin uh, limited edition decal, if you will. But uh, Jason Street, a couple of DEF CONs ago, uh, hit me up and he's like, hey, I'm doing this documentary with National Geographic and I would love to like have you on as part of it. The, there's a scene, it's kind of like Ocean's Eleven, we're going to be up in the suite and we're going to be talking about how we're doing this physical engagement, hacking these banks, and I want you to come on and, and hand me a couple of tools that we can use on this bank job. And I'm like, all right, cool. And uh, I go up there and I do my bit and uh, I, I'm kind of just busy with the booth really so I'm I'm just trying to get in and out and I uh I had a great time it was a lot of fun working with the director and a small team of a uh, small crew from uh discover or not discovery uh National Geographic getting my networks mixed up uh props to all my peeps over at discovery too dudes of all the hackers here few know tech better than Darren Kitchen we know you have some new stuff right. that's coming out he's patented one of the most potent devices now in use and brought several that aren't even on the market yet I'm done with that and I had a great time and I'm back to the booth. And Jason Street comes by and he's like, dude, the director wants you on this engagement. Like, come to Lebanon with us. And I'm like, uh, yeah, cool, bro. But I've got like Burning Man tickets that same date and I've never been and I'm so excited. You're not missing much. If you can, go back to the 1990s and then go to Burning Man. Partly, I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared to go to Lebanon. I'm gonna be totally honest with you on that one right now. And and this is just like a little life tip. Like when the universe offer, offers you opportunities, if you don't say yes, yes, you're telling the universe like, hey, stop providing me these opportunities. So always, you know, stay open to possibilities. I'm just saying. Then the director comes down and he's like, no, I, I don't think you understand. Like we, we, we want you to like be a part of this documentary, not just like a little like bit here. Uh, we want like you and Jason Street and Khalil to go in and, and, and rob these banks essentially. You're, doing, you're watching me do my warm up adorableness. Yeah, what's your what's your mantra? I, th I think I think no, I just I just try to relax my muscles and think happy thoughts. All right? Dead bunnies including my sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much relaxing of the sphincter in We're the car. So, that night uh, at one of the Defcon parties, I run into Mubix. That's actually I specifically go to run into Mubix cuz I'm like, "Hey, Mubix. I've never done a physical engagement like Jason asked me, like, it sounds legit. They've got like private security. Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, question mark? Like, should I do this? And Mubix says, dude, as long as they've got a rock solid de-escalation policy, you'll be fine. And, and he knows, he does these. I, I wish I could speak to, oh my God, the stories that we hear at the DEF CON booth, there's a thing within, you know, the whole red teaming pen testing community where unfortunately because of NDAs, we can't tell the specifics of stories, but Mubix gets to do, has, has had some amazing opportunities to do physical engagement. So if anybody's gonna know, it's him. So I trust him and I'm like, all right, cool. You know what, National Geographic, I'm on board. Uh, the documentary, by the way, if you wanna watch it, it's called Cyber Terror. They interweave this story about, you know, hackers, us doing cybersecurity and some terrorist thing. So you can skip this terrorist thing. It's really stupid, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a cool documentary. And it, I think it actually shows the lighter side, like the like, hey, this is an industry and we're making it, you know, we're making the world a better place by like throwing rocks in glass houses and saying like, we got to fix that window. Uh, and it's, it's always windows. There's no irony in that statement. Finally, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm down with this engagement. So I land in Beirut. Uh, there's a kerfuffle with the border officials. You know what? I can't tell that story on YouTube, but if we ever have an opportunity around a campfire, I would love to tell you a fun story about some border officials in Lebanon. Uh, in any event, Khalil picks me up. Awesome guy. Uh, and, and so, you know, Jason and Khalil and I pile in the SUV and we're just roaring down the, the highway in Beirut. And he's like, he's like, welcome to Lebanon. 
You are tied into hack the banks, or like whatever it is. Like Khalil's a like big, like a jolly guy. The guy is like bigger than 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 reality, you know. And I'm, you know, jet lagged and on cloud nine simultaneously. And, and and so I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, like like uh, as he's like weaving through traffic and he's got like a cigar and he's like. Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I talked to Mubix and, you know, as, as long as we've got a good de-escalation policy, we'll be cool. He goes, I have a de-escalation policy. Reaches in the center, calls his soul, goes, I got the de-escalation policy right here. And I have no idea why I'm sharing that part of the story, other than to say, like, Khalil, if you're watching this, I love you, man. That was an amazing experience. I don't, I don't, I didn't wet my pants, but that's like one of those moments where if I was going to, that's probably the, the, time in my life when I would. I'm gonna digress now uh, and just say that the Bash Bunny will not stop a bullet, but it may stop you from receiving one. We're doing this security awareness engagement for these banks in Lebanon for this documentary for National Geographic. And Jason Street is the one that's gonna like rock up in there with a USB rubber ducky and do some keystroke injection attacks. And they're all very benign payloads. Uh, my job is I'm casing the joint, I'm finding the ends, I'm getting the lay of the land so that I can relay that to, to Jason Street. And it's, it's great, like I'm wearing like a shirt where one of the buttons is like a hidden camera and like my whole body is like covered in wires in this vest underneath. You know, I've got like camera recording units and batteries and all this stuff. Like kind of terrifying because I look like I'm wired with a bomb and I'm going into these banks casing the joints, but not nearly as terrifying as what Jason does because he goes in posing as the IT guy, convincing them to let him behind the, you know, the till and literally plug USB rubber duckies into bank computers. And while he's doing this, he's also doing a real engagement. Both are real engagements, but he has another engagement going on for, crazily enough, a different bank. It kind of just worked out perfectly. Uh, so the director of, uh, of photography and the director and I and whatever, we're doing my bit where I'm casing the joint while Jason is offsite going and doing another actual gig. And, you know, half the day goes by and we're like, where's Jason, right? We've got to record his part now. It was a real simple social engineering engagement uh, where he's doing security awareness, where he rocks up into a bank and he's got like a fake letter from the CEO on his iPad. And he, you know, plugs USB rubber ducky into a couple of bank computers and he gets caught and he's excited. He wants to get caught because the thing is he's trying to teach them like, look, you know, you're, you're probably trained to look for like dudes with guns and ski masks, but you're probably not used to like looking for like dudes with flash drives in like a suit. And so he's like, all right, cool. You, you passed the test. Like the, the engagement was successful in that you were able to identify me as a threat. And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I've got an email here from your CEO. Uh, this is the de-escalation policy, basically saying like, you know, this was a blind test and you guys didn't know that you were being audited, but I was contracted by your company to come in here and audit. And they look at the, uh, the thing and they're like, oh, no, um, that's, that's when you enter the building, you need to go to the right. Uh, uh, you went to the left. We're the other bank. That the bank you're supposed to be at is over there. And they're like, wait, what did you do to our computers? Jason ends up in a back room somewhere with a dude he swears was about to end him. And like hours going by, he's like sweating bullets. Uh, you know what? I'm, he'll tell the story a little better than I can. But suffice it to say, he doesn't get disappeared and through, I mean, it's, it's Jason Street. He's a, he's a jolly guy that knows how to social engineer. He literally convinces them by the end of it that he is, you know, the, the like managers are stepping in and such. And he's like explaining, and their IT guy is convinced that it was like, you know, a, a, like a terrible payload and it's like a hello world on notepad. Um, but he convinces them that no, she, you know, this is why you need to hire us. This is why you need our services. This is like the first pen test was free. Like, you know, we should sign you up, get you on a contract. Like you clearly need our services and ends up like upselling this and somehow doesn't get murdered. I say that because the geofencing feature in the Bash Bunny Mark II would have saved that because the payload would not have run. You see, you rock up in there, you case the joint and uh, the Bash Bunny Mark II actually has uh, a Bluetooth radio 
that'll do what we call observation mode. It's basically like if you're familiar with Wi-Fi hacking, it's like monitor mode where it can see all of the devices, everything, whether it's advertising or not, and the MAC addresses and all that jazz. And you can see, and you can create a profile of like, I know that this place looks like this. So I know that these Bluetooth speakers and these cameras and these, um, you know, phones and, and doorbells and like we're living in an IoT world. There are so many, my, this... This van has got Bluetooth, obviously, right? I mean, your, your car probably has Bluetooth too. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can profile those and you can actually stack multiple uh, devices in your, um, in your geofence so that you're like guaranteed that you're not going to go outside of the scope of engagement and that you don't end up in a back room almost murdered, which is always good. You know, it was actually on that same trip to Beirut that I actually got the call from Mobix and I remember I was in the hotel room and Mubix calls and he's like, hey, I'm working on this awesome payload. Uh, it's, it's what is we know and love as quick creds. The, the, the payload that enumerates as, uh, you know, USB Ethernet device and with DHCP and, uh, and, and Responder and a couple other fun things, we're able to trick at a locked computer into divulging hashes. Uh, it's been exposed since expanded on to, to the point where it'll even do an offline brute force attack, like right on device and unlock the machine. I just saw a video recently on that that was fantastic. I'll link that as well. So I get this call from Mubix and he's like, dude, I'm prototyping this uh, payload. This is amazing. I'm using the land turtle actually. Uh, and that wasn't designed for that. I mean, that's a remote access toolkit, but it's inherently a USB ethernet device hardware wise. So it's a fantastic platform to try that on. But as soon as we start going through, it's like we realize like, oh, we're going to need this and this and this. And so that's actually, it was that call from Mubix that we started developing the Bash Bunny, which was kind of ironic and awesome how some of those things kind of came together in Beirut. So now let's fast forward a couple of years and spin the globe the other side of the planet, uh, hack across the planet. not America, the planet, you'll remember that I spent, uh, you know, a, a half a year in Southeast Asia, uh, based out of Jakarta. And I would tell you guys that I was on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Um, when I say that I'm an, I'm on an engagement. Back across the planet continues. The diplomatic mission to Alderaan is now taking me to South Africa, where I'm about to board this here Boeing 777, the 300ER, so it's like a little longer and can go further. It's on Emirates. They've got like the biggest fleet of these guys. I love that plane. I mean, don't get me wrong, the dream, 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 dreamliner. I wish I were dreaming. It's, there's NDAs that are on these things and I can't go into details about the client and Blue Ant and Jakarta, but I, I can say that uh, for a moment, uh, it was wonderful to be in a room with a high profile target. I can't even say what sector this is in actually, but I, I got to be in a room with all these, you know, high profile people showing up like almost like Q with like all of these like hacker tools. God, I, I love Q. Like of all the, you know, I didn't want to be Bond. I wanted to be Q. I'm terrified. I've had like one experience doing physical engagements at this point, having done that, that thing in, in, uh, in Lebanon, in the Middle East. And so now here I am in Southeast Asia and um, I have to pull off s uh, some exfiltration on this high profile target and I figured out how to do it. We had the Bash Bunny, so I could have multiple stages in a payload. So what I did was I wrote a payload that literally just did USB storage, just a, a flash drive, right? And on the flash drive, I put, you know, a PDF uh, and it was, it was all very benign. I just like, there wasn't an exploit in the PDF. I just needed something to convince them that I needed them to print something for me. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, and the way the scenario worked out, it was kind of perfect because, uh, you know, they, they go to print the document. Here's the thing. I, I set up a second stage to this payload and that's where the fun thing happens, uh, where it'll actually exfiltrate the documents over, not USB storage, because they've got a policy for that. So instead, and you'll actually remember that I did a segment on SMB exfiltration while in, in Jakarta for this reason, um, I had it enumerate, the second stage of the payload enumerates as a USB ethernet device and does some keystroke injection showing up as a keyboard to 
throw in some PowerShell that was able to send me the documents that I wanted without tripping up any of their alerts that would have seen documents going to USB mass storage. And it was a successful campaign because timing, timing is everything. If, uh, in fact, there's a great story that Sebastian and I like to tell. Uh, Seb from the, the Wi-Fi Pineapple, like... Fake DEF CON. Fake DEF CON was... Fake DEF CON in real shit. Vegas. No, but afterwards we did real DEF CON, didn't we? Did we name that one too? A DEF CON, of course, yeah. They're trying to destroy the bromance and it's not happening. You know what, again, campfire stuff, but timing is everything. And so I don't have a way to trigger the second stage remotely uh, on this original Bash Bunny payload. So I've just put in a sleep statement, you know, or, or crack delay, whatever, right? So I've got, so they plug it in and they're like, you know, going to, to open up a, you know, Adobe Acrobat and, and, and print this, this PDF. I'm counting down the seconds in my head while distracting them because I'm like, holy crap, I know when the second stage is gonna go off and I don't want them to be looking at the computer when it does. And I had been hoping that they're gonna be like turned, like going to the printer when this is gonna happen. And they are like, okay, you're a hacker, you know. Like you whiz through menus, keyboard shortcuts, all that jazz. You're not like clicking like file, open. Oh my gosh. You ever watch like, I don't wanna say Luddites, and this isn't me judging, because there's a lot of people that have like a lot of amazing skills that aren't ours. But, uh, and then to, but then to watch them use computers that we're really skilled for, with is sometimes like, nail biting because you're like how are you this slow i realize like my delays are not uh long enough for them to to print and turn around and and not be looking at the screen when i do the keystroke injection so thinking on my feet as i'm counting down the seconds in my head until it, it's about to do that i just i just spill my drink on them and that's kind of an awesome trick that you should use on any social engineering engagement. Could even then pair that with remote triggers, which we can now do from any Bluetooth device. And that's, that's what's kind of exciting uh, about this because you know this is, this is something that opens up a, a world of possibilities. And I remember thinking about like, okay, great. So we've added this functionality where we can like trigger things based on, you know, my like turning Bluetooth on on my phone or a Bluetooth speaker, or I've got like this little remote that I use that, uh, that I can use, uh, like just pressing a button in my pocket, right? And then suddenly there's a Bluetooth device in the air and Bash Bunny is gonna see it and trigger the rest of the payload. Well, how do we make that easy? And around the same time that we're like finishing up the software for this, uh, MG, is working on the new OMG cable. The OMG cable is the first third-party product to officially license DuckyScript uh, for keystroke injection. And it has been a, an amazing partnership to work with MG and to use Hack5 resources to help him get his mass manufacturing so that we can have these amazing, like literally amazing cables to the point where I don't know if this is my actual charging cable or if this is my OMG cable. I should have probably put the 3D printed thing on the end. When MG was developing this and he's like, hey, I want to put in some wireless features. We just added that to the language. In fact, I actually got to thank you, dude, because I totally stole that. <laughs> or didn't steal that, I put it in the Bash Bunny. The Bash Bunny now has very similar wireless features using a couple of very special ducky script commands. Yes. So those commands, basically, we've got, you're going to keep hearing this, <laughs> <laughs> but you got if present, if not present, wait for present and wait for not present. And you can just specify a Bluetooth device. And that means you can have multiple stages. You can create, you know, uh, a, a list of, uh, you know, you can have one stage go off when you broadcast this one thing on your phone. And then another thing, when you broadcast a different thing on your phone, there's like a lot of open source apps, uh, at least on the Android front, where you can literally send like a different beacon that'll say, a different thing. I know that there are so many possibilities for social engineering 
when you have remote triggers, especially on a hot plug device like this. I mean, clearly don't put it in, don't put it on like the, the cool decal that kind of gives it away. In fact, it just looks like a micro SD card reader. Props to Taz Bedeviled for the amazing artwork. I love the little bunny on here. And so we're gonna just go ahead and include the uh, limited edition decal with all of the bash bunnies because you know, I'm really grateful for your support over the years and for, um, you know, in particular, all the feedback to make this product what it is. I'm really proud of the Bash Bunny. So many possibilities between that and having the micro SD card so that you can do mass exfiltration. I'm talking like the entire hard disk, if you will, and even out of band exfiltration. So I, I've been mentioning all the Bluetooth features in terms of like, you know, observation or listening. Um, it does have transmit functionality. Uh, we haven't unlocked it in the framework, but it's totally possible. In fact, it's, it's, I'll put some proof of concept stuff up in the GitHub because there's some really cool things that you can do with that where you could literally be like on your phone, you know, in the lobby or whatever, and then waiting for Bluetooth beacons of like hashes or whatever it is that you're trying to get, uh, which is pretty cool. In fact, there's a lot of exfiltration techniques going back to the micro SD card thing. There's a lot of exfiltration techniques that I haven't divulged that um, I've been using on engagements and I know are like really practical and, and you know, efficient and uh, like work all the time. And I haven't seen them in the wild. So I think they're zero days. I have to like do another check, but I'm pretty sure nobody has done these kinds of techniques for exfiltration in the same way that we used SMB to exfiltrate in Jakarta rather than USB. Uh, there are so many different methods when you can bring your own network and there's some other devices that you can bring. And now that you've got like, you know, like up to two terabytes of storage on this thing, limitless potential here. And, and then being able to interact with it wirelessly. So I'm excited because as always, these are platforms, right? And I'm very proud of this platform and I'm very happy to see what the community has done thus far with the original Bash Bunny. And this is backwards compatible with all of those payloads. So, you know, you'll be able to just like drag and drop a payload.txt file over to like a switch position, flip the switch into your payload of choice, plug it into the computer, Bob's your uncle. Uh, it's, it's that simple. And it also opens up a new uh, element of possibilities for you to write amazing payloads. And we have like such thorough documentation, docs.hack5.org on uh, on Ducky Script, which this runs, uh, as well as the ins and outs of the Bash Bunny, and now you know the add-ons with the Bash Bunny Mark II, and it's come so far because of you guys. So, for instance, the Jackalope payload that uh, that that builds on Quick Creds from Mubix that you know uh, uses Responder and cracks the Intel AM hash, and then like unlocks the computer while it's you know like like plug this into a locked computer and break the password. Wait, what? Uh, and that was because of you guys' creativity. So I love that we can make cool hardware and then that, that enables the creativity on the software end with these payloads. Uh, and so I actually want to start rewarding those. And so we've actually kicked off, and then this is the first place I'm announcing it, the Hack5 Payload Awards. So you will be able to, and in fact, go to hack5.org, you'll find the details for the Payload Awards. And it basically means every week we're going to feature uh, a new awesome payload and uh, you know, there's gonna be Hack5 prizes and, and gift certificates. And then at the end of the year, we'll you know, choose of all the payloads this year, the like payload hero of the year. You will be rewarded. You upload your payload to the GitHub uh, payload repository. We've actually simplified that over at payloads.hack5.org. And I can't wait to see the kind of creativity you come up with with this. Uh, and, and there you go. That's kind of a little behind the scenes, some of the stories that went into the development of the Bash Bunny, uh, the original, and now the inspiration behind the new features in the Mark II. And I couldn't be more excited. So huge props to Mubix and Khalil and Jason Street and Seb and Taz Bedeviled and Q and who else? Uh, you know, all the Hack5 developers that have made this possible, updating the framework and making this really shine. So with that, and on behalf of all of us here, I'm Darren Kitchen, trust your technolist. Let's rob a bank, can I get a name?
man. Hey, man. Let's <laughs> rob a bank. Come on, how many banks? We'll go live. How many banks have you robbed at this point? Right, quite a few. We hack in the NASA. Hack all the things. Drink all the food. Hack all the things. Drink all the food. Hack all the things. Got this vodka and this Red Bull. They still give me wings, so we drink. Thanks for supporting Hack Five. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.